Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Sun. Uh, my name is Sandhu. I'm the artistic director here. And uh, tonight we have our open studio, and uh, we have four musicians uh, from LA, from Cal Arts. And uh, this has been an ongoing uh, exchange uh, that started in 2007 when I visited Cal Arts. And uh, I talked to the students there, and also talked to Clay about a sort of exchange program uh, bringing Cal Arts students over. And um, the first year, uh, a couple of artists came, they worked on their own projects, so for the second year, and um, this year it's, it's a bit of a different format, um, whereas a couple of, the last couple of years there were individual projects, but now um, they're working on one piece. Clay will talk about this a bit more. Um, also, since it's in the third year and we're looking into continuing this, um, this relationship of products, we wanted to open it up also to, um, you know, nothing is really set yet, so not how you guys are going to California tomorrow. But, uh, you know, we want to look into possibilities of other schools and other uh, institutions, uh, you know, individual artists, what are the possibilities of going, um, you know, going to California, going to Cal Arts. Um, so I'm going to pass it on to Clay, who's the, who's the instructor there. And he'll talk a little bit about um, the program and then uh, about some of the process that's been going on at Sky. So. Thanks. Hi, I'm Clay Chaplin from the California Institute of the Arts out in Los Angeles. Um, as Taku said, this is our third year coming over to Amsterdam this time. And um, I've been asked to talk a little bit about CalArts and our um, Experimental Sound Practices program, which is a uh, graduate program in composition. Um, let me just start with a little bit of background on CalArts. Um, CalArts is a, it's an art school. Um, it's located in Valencia, California, which is just about 25 miles north of Los Angeles proper um, in really a really lame suburb. Um, but you can go to LA and everything's okay. Um, CalArts is, was started in 1971 out of the Walt Disney uh, program. They combined the Los Angeles Conservatory of Music uh, along with um, where it was Disney's idea to combine the Los Angeles Conservatory of Music with a new school that he was starting to support the arts. So under one roof in this really weird looking building in Valencia that's been there since the 70s, um, you have a film school, a theater school, a music school, obviously. Um, did I see theater school already? A writing program. And I think I left out dance. So all under one roof. You know, you have access to all these different um, media or disciplines. Um, so it's a really diverse place. It's definitely a, you know, the, the spirit there from the 70s on has been there are no grades, um, although we do have some sort of evaluation system now um, just for accreditation purposes. But um, it's a really nice place for people that are willing to work independently on their own who don't need a lot of hand-holding or want like a really structured environment. Um, you're allowed to come there and work on whatever style of music or interests you may have. Um, it, on the website or the propaganda, it talks a lot about the um, interdisciplinary aspect of the school. And a lot of that is not very, it's not very formal. It's not like you can go take a class with you know, a film student, an art student, and a dance student all together. But if you're motivated enough, you can seek out those people. So a lot of our um, composition students um, work on sound scores for film. Maybe they'll do an art installation with an art student, or they'll collaborate with a choreographer, um, and those types of things. Um, let me just see what else. I to say. Oh, the other thing is, even though I mentioned that Valencia, the town that Red that Red Cat that Cal Arts is in, uh, there are a lot of opportunities in the LA area. Um, a number of our students go on to work at some of the more, I guess, media-centric galleries in LA. Um, one of them would be in Sea and Space Gallery in Highland Park. Uh, the Machine Project, which you might have heard about, um, which is in Silver Lake. And there's Beyond Baroque. And you know, so there are lots of opportunities in Los Angeles um, once you get out of CalArts. Um, the other thing that CalArts just recently uh, started up back in 2003 was Red Cat, which is a big um, theater 
um, down in the basement of Disney Hall. Disney Hall is this giant Frank Gehry, weird looking building in downtown Los Angeles. And so we got to be in the basement, because I don't know, I guess what we do is to not, I mean, it doesn't suit the big hall. Um, but in that, it's basically a black box theater and they do dance performances, music, everything. So it's kind of a more higher profile venue to get CalArtians out of the suburbs and into the city. Um, in general, right now, I'd say LA is a really fertile place for the arts. Um, there's a lot of things happening and going on. Um, probably in the last five years, things have been really picking up. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the overview of CalArts. I'd just say, you know, of course, calarts.edu is the webpage if you want to check that out. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the Experimental Sound Practices Program. Um, it's a composition program, although you don't have to be a composer. You don't know how. You don't have to know how to write notes. Um, you can come there as a sound artist or someone who maybe just wants to experiment with electronics or do circuit bending and those types of things. Um, we also have a sort of growing music technology program, which right now is a undergraduate program, but will be hopefully in the next couple years moving into a graduate level program. And in that program, you can do interface design. Um, they build a lot of robotic instruments. Um, and they explore this uh, programming language called Chuck. Um, so experimental sound practices has been around, oh, for a long time, probably about 12 years now. It used to be called Composition New Media back in the days of you know CD-ROMs and those things. So we changed the name a few years ago to experimental sound practices. Um, a lot of our students, um, are engaged in all sorts of activities from sound art, circuit bending, to traditional composition with electronics. Um, and let's see, who do we have on the faculty? I'm the uh, studio director and teach in the composition uh, part of experimental sound practices. We also have uh, Mark Trail, um, who's been really, um, I guess his whole background comes from San Francisco and that whole scene. Um, also, Ulrich Krieger, who was uh, was in Berlin as a saxophonist, um, although he turns the saxophone into something you've never heard uh, before. I don't know if you know his work. Um, he also tours now with Lou Reed. They have an experimental uh, trio, which is kind of really kind of weird, um, um, but he's you know pushing pushing the boundaries with Lou Reed. Um, there's also sort of from the Vandalweiser uh, practices, maybe centered out of Berlin. Uh, we have Wolfgang von Schweinitz and another fellow named Michael Passaro, um, and they do much more, um, I don't know, quiet sort of music, very still. Um, how did you describe it the other day? What did you say? The, um, okay, no, no, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's like um, kind of taking four minutes and 33 seconds as like just a general um, battle plan and uh, they're frequently six hour, eight hour pieces where almost nothing happens. You know, yeah. <laughs> traditionally, uh, the traditional perception is almost nothing. So yeah, that was the, the post Cajun program, um, um, which is actually, it's actually really interesting. Um, Sarah Roberts is our, uh, she handles like media theory, um, sort of play activities like fluxus pieces and those types of things, group activities and those sorts of dynamics. Um, and then Wadada Leo Smith, who runs the African American Improvisational Program there. Um, we also have uh, an ensemble where we combine people with Leo's um, system of composition along with experimental sound practices, um, you know, computer musicians and sound artists, all into a giant ensemble that plays together. Um, and then David Rosenboom, who throughout history has kind of been involved um, with electronic and computer music. He's our dean. And um, what's great about it is he's a practicing composer first, and actually we recently just finished this giant <laughs> multimedia thing down at Red Cat um, that he was spearheading, and that was really, really interesting. So it's, um, I would say all of the uh, faculty there are encouraged to be artists first and not teachers. So, um, I mean, of course, you know, we like to teach too, but um, the goal there is that you come and you learn to be a practicing artist. Um, there are not a lot of rules or, um, sort of hand-holding that goes on. So um, I don't know if that kind of sums up. Do you guys have any questions or anything? It's just like, it's a little abstract. Maybe you haven't seen what CalArts is or... 
Okay, great. Uh, let's keep going then. We, this is our third year. I'm going to talk a little bit about the project that the four of us have been working on. Um, we came together as an ensemble about a month before uh, we came to Amsterdam, and we played one or two gigs out in LA. Um, each of us has our own skill set coming to Stein, although um, we're not all complete like computer musicians or, or that type of thing. Um, so our backgrounds were very um, different. Um, and the goal here was for each of us to come and, of course, work on our own setup and our own practice using the tools at Stime and, you know, working with the artists here and the Stime staff, um, just to, you know, see what this is all about. And what's been great about this year compared to years past is we decided to all work on one goal together, which was to try to take a week. We literally started this, what you're going to hear in a minute, um, about a week ago. And we've had, um, you know, quite a time at it. It's been a lot of work. Um, and uh, so we've been exploring the junction program here. Anula worked with Daniel Shorno on a crackle box um, controller for the cello. We're running the cello through the crackle box, basically. Um, Dave worked with um, Frank and some other people on using, what is it called? The real play controller, um, which was new to him. So trying to, the, our goal here was to try to stay away from the laptops and just create an improvisation um, together as a group. Dave, uh, I always do that. Casey, there's Dave, Casey, and then Casey Anderson, so I always get confused. Um, and Casey has been working with programming Super Collider and his pedal instrument and incorporating the saxophone into the computer. Um, and so through all these processes, we've been sitting here programming away, and Onulus is kind of like, oh, guys, come on, you know, um, doing that kind of thing. So. Our goal was to create sort of a 25 or 20 minute just improvisation using these tools and instruments. And in, we also added some video projection, but um, it's definitely a work in, in progress. So um, we just wanted to present what we had pretty much that was ready um, to show you. And then if you have questions afterwards, feel free to come and talk to me or any of these guys. Um, Casey recently graduated from CalArts, from the composition or ESP oh. comp program, um, but worked a lot in our studios and everything too, so um, you know, he can tell you more about it. Anula is currently <coughs> there in the former composer program. We were glad to pull her from the instrumental program and get her into composition. And um, she's had a lot of, well, I'll let each of these guys see what they do in a second. And then, as I said earlier, Dave Casey um, is a current uh, experimental sound practice student right now. Um, Oh, I guess I didn't say, the program's really small. We have about six new students a year, so there are about 12 total. It's a two-year graduate program. And you get a master's in fine arts. Um, oh, and we recently started a DMA program as well. Um, we currently have two students in the School of Music. It's our first year um, getting a doctoral in music, um, and they'll be expanding that as well. So there's a lot happening. Oh, and one other thing, sorry, and then I'll really shut up because I want to shut up. But then, of course, I have to tell you more. Uh, we just opened this brand new concert hall on campus called The Wild Beast. And you may go, well, who the hell names a concert hall The Wild Beast? Well, it's based off the Morton Feldman quote um, concerning, you know, here lies the music inside the wild beast or something like that. I'm sure I just it. Um, but it's a really unique concert hall in that um, one of the sides of the door, okay, so it's like your standard concert hall inside. It's really nice. It's beautiful. But then, the whole side of the building opens up, and then you can have outdoor concerts. And you know, in California, we have nothing but sunshine. So in the spring, and we haven't done this yet. It just opened. Literally, we're having classes. This is our first semester in there. Um, so we have a gamelan group and, and those types of things. So in the spring, it's going to be really fantastic when we open the, the wall of the beast and have concerts outside. Um, so that's another you know, added bonus to school <laughs> music. Um, so at this point, um, should I say, did I say enough about our project, or one of you guys? I'm going to shut up. <laughs> Let's pass this. I'm going to pass it around over to Anula, and she's just going to. Anula Marie Perry. Um, real quick, my background uh, is actually in rock music. I started playing cello kind of late, but I got a performance degree at Cal Arts as an undergrad, and I toured for two years. Um, and now I'm back as a performer-composer. I study with Ulrich Krieger. Um, 
I play mostly improvised music, and um, I like to work a lot with uh, microsound improvisation, which of course requires amplification. And um, here, I spent two days building this crackle box with Daniel um, that can be used a lot of different ways. And right now, I've got three bowls from IKEA that are foot controllers. I play with, you know, bare feet, so I can turn my knobs and whatnot and three alligator clips for the strings. So I literally, we finished it on Monday and I'm just learning how to make it work. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, that's really all, all I do. I just work with the many variables I have here and found objects sometimes. So. <laughs> okay, thank you. We're here at this gate over there. I'm David Casey, and um, my background is in rock music as well, and <clears throat> I have a composition degree, so I guess technically I'm a classically trained composer, but I really don't write notes or have no kind of interest in that in a long time, so. Um, coming to Cal Arts, I guess I really wanted to break out of my habits and, and things I felt really comfortable with, and being here has definitely done that, especially moving away from sitting behind a laptop and clicking the mouse. And, uh, so <clears throat> it's much more what I'm doing. With this setup is much more physical and much more closely, uh, I guess, related to performance, you know, in a, in a really physical sense. Uh, so what I got going on is just a uh, using this real play accelerometer that Frank hooked me up with, and taking all the uh, data from the axes and the axes and the buttons to control some samples, as well as uh, with this drumstick, I had the contact mic. I get some sound off that, and then uh, using junction, take the, the amplitude and, and run that into the computer as well to be controlling some of the samples and oscillators and stuff like that. And then I just put a little mic up in front to catch, uh, capture the ambient sound and uh, tune the oscillators based on the pitch that it, that it receives. And then I can also use the have it set up so I can play it as a percussive bass. So I, I can bang in front of it and it takes the amplitude and then runs that in the machine. So it's really been fun and then my handy you know, nano control. Is just levels on the fly, but it's been it's been great uh, to start moving away from you know like I said just sitting in front of the laptop. But uh, but yeah, I mean this is just um, it's been awesome and the way that Takuro kind of presented being here at Stein is totally accurate. That like this is like a starting place in a sense. I feel like I can really build off a lot of this and and keep growing. And it's just sort of the beginning of something in, in a lot of ways. So it's. Uh, yeah, what you hear is just a just the start, but it's uh, it's been really rewarding and a lot of fun. Here, so. and Casey Anderson from the York Sex School. Um, my name's Casey Anderson. Um, my background: I was a saxophone player. Um, I've, I've been playing saxophone for a very long time before started composing. Um, at a pretty traditional, uh, especially in regards to composing, but I, I studied classical saxophone forever. Um, upbringing in school and uh, got more into um, improvised music and uh, you know, open improvisation or structured improvisation and uh, computer music, uh, which is mainly what I focused on um, when I did my master's at CalArts, which I finished in May, um, as well as starting to do installations. So um, these days those are kind of what I'm, I'm focused on, though I still write for instrumental ensembles on occasion. Um, similar to what Dave was saying, a, a lot of my time here was spent kind of just rethinking my approach to um, in any sort of, uh, you know, outside the computer interface um, with uh, live electronic music. Um, and uh, like Clay said, I did mainly work with Super Collider. So a lot of it was, um, I have this ex like this lapel microphone that I got at Radio Shack shoved in here and taped to the side, and then this um, contact mic. And so a lot of my time here was kind of spent um, 
aside from trying to get away from like, you know, hiding in front of the laptop screen and just kind of clicking on things, which I've done plenty of, um, really just focusing on uh, the saxophone as the primary controller and uh, this foot pedal as kind of like a necessary way to just make kind of subtle changes. Um, and and that's, that's kind of where I'm at with it right now. Um, the, the processing that I'm doing is pretty simple. It's just some simple granular stuff or FFT stuff. But a lot of it, the, the focus is on kind of the nuances of the sound inside the saxophone. So it's, um, it's a work in progress, but I mean, it's just really uh, a lot. A lot of my time here was spent kind of, uh, you know, upending this kind of lazy approach I've had to instrument interfaces um, with especially my electronic music, so, yeah. Yeah, you can tell we're from LA, sorry. Um, <laughs> stupid. Uh, this is my glove instrument called Stupid Thing. Um, I've had it, I've been working on this on and off for about 10 years. Um, and on Thursday of last week, I almost wasn't even going to bring this, and I did, and I'm really glad I did. And on Thursday, I went up to see June to talk about a resistor. I was having problems on the old interface, and June was like, oh, let me redo this thing for you. And like a day and a half later, completely remodeled the whole glove, and I was just thrilled. Like it's re, it's totally inspired me to go back and keep performing with this. So um, yeah, thanks, June. Um, inside, and God, you know, tell me if I'm wrong, inside the <coughs> Arduino board with a wireless system, something you could plug, well, whatever, right? So inside it comes across and then there's this little receiver over here and it's going into uh, a Max MSP patch that I've had for a long time. Um, but I spent some time, you know, once I got this, rethinking that as well and have been, you know, reprogramming the sounds that come out of that. Um, so I'm really just thrilled to have that happen while I was here. A um, little bit about just some of the nerdy stuff in our setup. Um, we got a great demo of Junction software from Frank, and one of the goals we wanted to try to do in sort of a, you know, this is sort of a complicated thing with four different players and video and all that, was to incorporate Junction. So each of us have uh, Junction running, and it's mainly tracking our pitch and our amplitude values, and that is um, at times controlling some of the parameters of the video. Um, the video is definitely a work in progress as well as kind of everything is. But, um, so we have a little wireless network running between us and that comes over to the machine that's running this program called Isadora, which is providing the um, video and Dave has Isadora running on his computer too. Um, one of the great talks we had a week ago, we just, I mean literally it's been one week working in here, um, was to shake up our setup. So this is why we wanted you to sit in the floor put the speakers in the surround and just project onto you and use the video as kind of just like a, a dynamic kind of thing. So there's not like a real, you know, there's no narrative or anything like that in the video images. So I'm going to really shut up and we're going to play for about 20 to 25 minutes.
tắt
Maybe we could also open up to a more casual setting. Uh, um, yeah, again, the key word today, like everybody said, it's work in progress. Um, so if you guys have thoughts or, you know, have questions, please bother these guys um, over at the bar. Um, oh, there's a question. Yes. I have an observation. Yes. I like both the gesture you, you have before sound, this is, is like touching the balls of a bull. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and uh, it's, it's not really clear what it does to sound to me. 
what this is, is fantastic. When you go up, it's really, it's really nice. And it gets more clear what you're doing with the sound. Yeah. It's, uh, what's funny is that was the, I, uh, whatever, the light sensor, I wanted a little more out of it, and I wasn't getting it, so I said, okay. <laughs> so it, I could have scaled it a little better where when I was doing this, there would be a little more push coming out of the sound. And so I was kind of struggling with that. Uh, I like it was a belly kind of thing. This, this is... Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I it's funny, when I talk about it, I can... <coughs> I know, I'm Italian, so I always... Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Must have some Italian blood in it. No. <laughs> if there are any other questions, I mean, or like anything, shoot, if you want. How much of this piece was improvised and how much was this like? Pretty much, that was one of the things we spent a lot of time talking about. Because really, it was only about two days ago where we finally had all of our individual instruments sort of working in a way that we really wanted to. So we spent a lot of time actually talking about structure and, and how to do that. So a lot of it was sort of improvised, but um, I sort of felt like we needed a little more of a, just sort of a pathway that we're getting through. So I actually emailed them, like, okay, here's what we're going to try to do. We're going to go through this little, we had about seven steps in a way to get through. Um, and those came from just improvisations from last week when we didn't even really have our setups tuned up, but we just said, okay, we got to keep playing, we got to play. So, um, yeah, they're, they're definitely, um, you know, if we had more time, we do we do a lot of things, I think, differently, but we were, you know, we, we got through what we, what we could. And, uh, but so the majority of it, I would say, within each little moment was improvising. I mean, we didn't know exactly, but we knew certain cues when certain things happened that, okay, now we're going to go kind of to, to this spot, or this duo, or this duo, and that kind of thing. So. We could have come in, and maybe maybe we should have in retrospect, like this kind of free for all jam. But you know, I don't know. Especially, also, I think working with video, although the video, I kind of screwed it up. But the uh, there's something about that for me where it's just like I kind of want to tie it in a little more. So I felt like at times we would use that kind of as a means for okay, here we are. You know, that kind of thing, so. um, if I might say. No, I'm come on. About the video, I like very much the color, the, the shade of green. Mm -hmm. uh, it was perfect, I think, with, with this kind of sound that was coming out. It was uh, getting everything more acid, and I like the green very much. This okay. Of, uh, green? It's good. <laughs> no, that's, that's good to know. There were some other subtle things. I was hoping to work on a little more where the amplitude was changing color and, and those types of things. Um, but if you got this correct, you, you were controlling the, the, the visual, the video. I'm um, just queuing ahead. Yeah. And just the button. There were no like. other like there were no other sounds or musicians that were influencing. Oh, they could influence it, but I was sort of the yeah. one just yeah. jumping it from the next little setup. In his door, they use this great metaphor of the theater and stage, you know, from scene to scene, as they call it. So I was kind of jumping from scene to scene. But then at any given time, um, when Casey was playing his solo, um, his amplitude was affecting the video. So if he's not playing, there's black. And then when he played, it would like move around. Or if he played loud enough, the image would come back together for a second. And then when he let go, it would go right back. That kind of thing. But that's programmed. It's not like you control it. Um, it's programmed in the software, yeah. But through his amplitude thing into Junction, you know, that sends some data that goes across the network actually to that machine, and then it, and there's a parameter in the uh, video software that you can, you can actually control anything you want um, at that point. So in that case, we were trying to just map the color, or in his case of the solo, it was <coughs> is the video there or not. And if it is there, it's broken up. And if he plays loud enough and holds it, then it'll come back together. That kind of thing. Yeah, I was just wondering if you were ever thinking of like letting this stuff loose on the public, like. Um, you know, just like, you know, in the damn square, late at night, you know, with the speakers around the corners, and like, no one would know what was going on. Yeah, they wouldn't know what the hell was going on, right? Yeah. Um, sure, yeah, <laughs> we can come back and do that. <laughs> How's, well, February's too cold, how's June? <laughs> or May, I hear May is really nice. Um, but, um, yeah. Questions? 
curious about, did you say it was a three-year program, the composite program? At CalArts? Yeah. The experimental sound practice is a two-year two years, graduate so program. Is it within the fine arts or is it program in itself? I'm sorry? Is it within fine arts or is, is it a program in itself? Oh, it's, it, it's a program within the music school. It's sort of a branch. We have a composition program, mm -hmm. and we have a specialty in what they call experimental sound practices. Is that, is that kind of what you meant? Or yeah, I was just asking what it was because it wasn't clear. Yeah, it's its own sort of practice. There's a different set of classes and things that you'll take if you're an experimental sound practices student as opposed to, say, just a regular composition mm -hmm. student. But really, anyone can take any class you want. I mean, it's it's just on paper. So the college fine arts so, uh, and music theater, you said? Yeah, it's all, it's, I left out the art school is what I left out. Yeah. Art school, <laughs> <laughs> out out, art school, dance school, film school, music school, theater school, and a school called critical studies, which is writing and critical theory. And there are like kind of open interactive uh, connections between the art school and the composing school, like what you said, that you can do like collaboration. Totally, yeah. And it's really, but it's up to you in that community to go and, you know, oh, hey, I met a, uh, you know, a film director today and he wants some sound for his film. Or I'm working with this choreographer, I really like her dance, so I want to do music for you. And if, if you do that, then the faculty's there to help you support those projects, but we don't formally say, okay, you're going to work with this person. No, no, but know. as a uh, fine arts student, you have access to the music sort of part of school and to the Oh, well, in that case, no, not really. If you're in the art school, it's kind of hard to get access to the music studios and, and that kind of thing. But it's, again, if you have a project you're working on with someone in the music yeah, school, yeah. then no problem. Well, in years past, we had each student, we had three MFAs come and they each wrote their own proposal to kind of work on their own project. So we just kind of spent the day in here working on stuff, but we didn't really do a formal presentation like this. Um, and so this year we decided to work together since we're all improvisers and to see what we could come up with in one week. Um, and we were joking today, it was like, God, it was a week ago, we were rearranging the room, and it seems like a month ago. Like, we've been in here, well, not way too much, but a lot. Yeah, so. We get three days off before we go home, so we're, we're going to go play after this. So. Is that something you continue at home? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to go back. Actually, we have a gig um, in, where is it, at, uh, what is it, The Wolf. I think in January, and then we're supposed to do a performance in December at the Cal Arts Concert Hall. And on, I'm sorry, I know you were just saying, I recital. <laughs> Anula has her recital, and we're going to perform on that as well. So this was definitely an, a killer opportunity to just come for a week and dive in, get all this sort of technical crud figured out, and then we'll go home and keep working on it. So. Yes? Um, I think I'm sitting in a bit of a disadvantage spot, but were you talking, saying that you had like surround sound as well, this? Uh, uh, not maybe formally not really. surround, but, but each of our sound was point located, so yeah, mine was speaker. Yeah, so each person has their own speaker uh, there. And that's kind of why we want you know, to keep something going. Okay. okay, thanks. Okay. For So um, again, thanks for coming. Please talk to these guys. Um, our next event is the 21st. We're going to have a concert by the Sonology students in The Hague. And then uh, on the 22nd, we're going to have our local stop series. Um, so hey, Gamila, it's called Gamila. What? 21st, it's called Gamila. 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 OK, so it's a, it's a collection. OK. Um, so. All this stuff will be announced on our website and our mailing list. Please sign up and uh, hope to see you again. Thanks.